Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Anthony Menzel, and we are transmitting our weekly Sunday service in English. We're going to start off our service in prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I just ask you to please forgive us for our sins, our mistakes, our bad thoughts, feelings, attitudes. Words and actions, Father God. Ooh. Bless this service, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Bless this to be a special time in your presence and your word. Praise you, Holy Spirit, for covering with your tongues the things that we don't know with our understanding. Hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you, Father. For this special time in your presence and your word. Bless us to be changed for the better permanently, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through this time, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. And bless everybody. Be glad they participated, especially you, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, as we prepare to do our praise and worship, um, this week, I do have to announce that one of the main intercessors in our church passed away suddenly this week, Sister Lori Clausen. Sister Lori Clausen was a very special person, and she was the kind of intercessor. She was an example of uh, what an intercessor should be. She'd be the kind of person you would say that we want to have a, a somebody's not feeling well. She would say, I'm going to get up every hour at night to pray. And um, she's going to be very, very missed, very sweet person. Um, and her last testimony, which unfortunately, because we did not have power at our picnic, she came to the picnic. She gave a testimony, which was not recorded. We normally record and Now I'm glad that we record everything, but we did not record that part of the service. But she shared that because she holds on to Jesus Christ, she could always start over. She could lose everything and always start over again. And, you know, just, just such a testimony that she had of kindness. She gave up, you know, she took care of people for free. Um, there's a lady that she took care of that was very dear to her when that lady got sick. Connie got sick. I believe her name is Connie. She, she took care of her for free um, for many, for a long time. So we're going to miss Sister Lori. I could not pretend uh, this week that it's a normal week, a normal service. Hallelujah. So uh, many of the songs that we're going to sing, some of them are on our website, AbundantLoveChurch.us. Uh, some of them are not. They hopefully will be uploaded soon. Um, but we're going to sing them in honor of Lori. I've adapted some of the songs to honor her. But also just remember, you know, when you're right with the Lord, for example, when you hear my home going, hallelujah. If you're right with the Lord, you don't have to worry about the transition. It's just a transition to heaven. Death is a promotion. Like it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Six to eight, absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. So our spirit and our soul as believers, hallelujah, will go to be with the Lord Jesus right away until the rapture of the church, when we will have glorified bodies and that will join our spirits and souls. Hallelujah, according to 1 Thessalonians 4. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to get started with our praise and worship. I just wanted everybody to understand who we're talking about when we sing about Lori, hallelujah. Oh, gosh, she shall hold on a money has shown that. Hallelujah. When you hear of her home going, don't worry about her. When you hear of her home going, Lord, don't you worry about her. Go 
one thing I know, yeah, he sure was born again. She made preparations one day because the Lord she didn't know when. some illnesses and sometimes when we are the Lord allows the illness in our body so that we can make the transition to heaven hallelujah and that's what this next song is about praise the Lord there was a leak in her building so her soul had to move it had to move it had to move there was a leak in her building so her soul had to move to a building not made by hands. There was a leak in her building, so her soul had to move. It had to move. It had to move. There was a leak in her building, so her soul had to move to a building I made by hand. Last year, she could have known that she might soon leave this world. But before she went, she let us all know that she was moving to her new heavenly home. Her building kept on leaning, so her soul had to move. It had to move. It had to move. Her building kept on leaning, so her soul had to move. To a building not made by hand. Now she can read her title clear to mention in the sky. She's been very well to all of her friends. And God has wiped the tears from her eyes. Her building kept on sinking, so her soul, it had to move. It had to move. It had to move. Her building kept on sinking, so her soul had to move. To a building I made by hand. 
now she can read. Now she can read her title, please. To mansions in the sky. She bid that way to all of the friends. And God invites the tears from her eyes. Her building kept on sinking, so her soul had to move. It had to move. It had to move. Her building kept on sinking, so her soul it had to move. To a building not made by hand. Hallelujah. Oh, God, she sees her mother and her mother has shown that. Oh, hallelujah. Like I said, she was an intercessor. Hallelujah. So I believe that this is a, a song that's a good song to sing in her honor. If I could hear Sister Lori's words again. If I could hear her tender voice. How happy I would be. It would mean so much to me. If I could hear Sister Lori's words again. If I if I could hear Sister Lori the words again. If I could hear the tender voice again. How happy I would be. It would mean so much to me. If I could hear Sister Lori words again. She used to pray that I on Jesus would rely and always walk the shining gospel way. So I'm trusting in his blood and I'm seeking a home above. Well, I shall see Lori some sweet day. Oh, if I could hear Sister Lori the words again. If I could hear her tender voice again. How happy I would be. It would mean so much. Me. If I could hear Sister Lori's words again. Hallelujah. Oh, gosh, we love you, Lord. 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 We can never Lord. forget you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, that she is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray you keep us on the way to heaven so that one day we would yes, see her and our Lord. other loved ones who are over there again. Yes. I'm on my way to, to Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. Don't go, don't hinder me. 
trouble of the world is over. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. There's no more weeping, no more wailing. Hallelujah. And God has wiped you, wiped all the tears from her eyes. Amen. Soon it will be done. The trouble of the world. Trouble of the world. Trouble, Lord of the world, soon it will be done. The trouble of the world going home to live with God. No more weeping and wailing. No more 
sing. Lord, you're so precious to us, part because you give us the strength to keep on going in hard times. Yes, Lord. And Lori have went through a lot of hard times in her life, and we pray to you that in spite of all those hard times, she stayed faithful to you, Lord. Oh, God, so she shall go with the money has shown that. So we sing. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on.
is done, almost done. Hear my cry. Precious Lord, and lead me home when the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past. today is about what to do when you are hit by tragedy, when you're hit by a sudden trial. And so this song is really appropriate for that. This song and also our, our offering song will be appropriate for that. His eye is on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he cares for me, his eye is on the sparrow. I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. I sing because my soul is happy. Even on our worst day, our soul's happy because we have Jesus. I sing because I'm free. God's eye is on the Pharaoh. And I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. Let not your heart be troubled. His tender word I give and resting on his goodness. I lose my 
doubt and fear. Though by the path he leadeth, yet one step I may see. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. Praise God, I sing, because my soul is happy. Thank you, Lord, I sing, because my soul is free. God's eye is on the Pharaoh, and I know that Jesus is watching. Over you and me. And this is my favorite verse. Whenever I am tempted, whenever cloud arises, when some give way to sighing, when hope is in me. I draw the closer to God From care he sets me free God eyes on the sparrow And I know he watches me his eyes on the sparrow, and I know that Jesus is watching over you and me. Praise God, I sing, because my soul is happy. Thank you, Lord, I sing. Because my soul is free, God's eye is on the sparrow, and I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching. Yes, I know that Jesus is watching. Over you and me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we praise you. We thank you yes. for this time of music and yes. worship. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of our sister Lori. Yes. Oh, God. Please just tell her, Lord God. I already told her, but tell her again that we love her. We miss her. Hallelujah. This is not a normal Sunday for us personally, many of us personally in the church, and also for the church of, of Abundant Love Christian Church. Yes, we praise you, Father. We thank you for her life. We yes, praise Lord you for this Jesus. time of musical worship. Yes. We praise you for her, her example, Lord yes, God. Jesus. Bless us to follow that example yes. that we might end up our lives on this earth in glory and be right. with her in, in one day as well, along with our loved ones who have gone on before us, Father God. Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray about the sermon. Praise the Lord. Father God, I pray right now that you would speak through me now. Yes, Jesus. I pray you would speak through me, Father, yes, and that Jesus. we would all receive everything you have for us, Lord. Oh, I'm an imperfect vessel, but speak to me, Father. I thank you and I praise you for yes, it, Lord. Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you know, one thing that I was thinking about this week, and 
And I don't know if I'll be called on to, to do the official funeral service for Sister Lori, but it's just to really, um, the people that you care about, the people that you value, to really, um, you know, appreciate them, make sure you spend time with them, make sure that when you're with them, that you, you hug them, you kiss them. Um, we have another relative, a Judy, who passed on uh, this year. And um, she would tell my daughter, Destiny, she was her biological paternal grandmother. And she would tell my, my, uh, my daughter, Destiny, whenever you talk with somebody you love, always tell them that you love them. And, you know, just to appreciate um, people. And so that's really important. Don't take people for granted. You know, hug your children, hug, hug all the people that you love in your life and, and, you know, make sure you tell them that you care about them, that you love them, try and be nice. Don't leave angry. Um, I was a little upset with Destiny earlier this week when she was driving from Virginia, but because she was going to leave before it got light out and I just use this as an example. I said to her, you know, I know you're going a far distance and I'm a little annoyed. So, but I love you. I'm just going to go now. I love you. I left it like that because I didn't want it to be a situation where something happens in the last conversation, the last interaction you have with somebody is something of anger or being upset or something like that. But for the actual message today, I wanted to mention that because I think that's important that we really appreciate, you know, the Lord says to, to, um, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we have to be thankful for our loved ones. I would say, be thankful for the Lord Jesus above all and our salvation. And then after that, I would be say, be thankful for our loved ones, right? We're entering the season of Thanksgiving fall. People think about Thanksgiving here in the United States. And really, what's the most thing to be thankful for? First and foremost is the Lord Jesus, Amen. because we get to have such a wonderful friend and he's our heavenly father. The word says that, you know, in Isaiah, wonderful counselor, prince of peace, everlasting father. So one of his titles is father, even though he's got the son, he's also our spiritual father. Um, so it's, you know, Jesus first for me. And then after that is my loved ones. Amen. Because yeah, it's great to have food and material things and other blessings. And I'm grateful for those as well, but be, more than anything is, is my loved ones. And the time that we get to spend together, I just think is such a treasure and so valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm grateful for all the times, for example, that I, I did get to share uh, with sister Lori yes, and, Lord. um, this morning on uh, this week on Thursday, when I got the news about her passing, I just went to when I, I was on my way to work and the family kind of just wanted to be alone. So I didn't go and stay with the family, but I went to work uh, cause I was already on my way to work. And the first thing I started to do was just take screenshots of all the texts that she, we had inter exchanged. Um, cause I just kind of want to save some of that, you know, um, so many sweet words, words of encouragement that I'm really going to miss. Um, but in any case, I felt the Lord give me a message for today that it has to do with what happened this week. Um, but it also applies in general. And so the message is what to do when you are hit with a tragedy, what to do when you are hit with a tragedy. And I'll be honest, I was not expecting um, this loss. It is a tremendous loss uh, for me personally and for our church. So there's three things that I wanted to mention, three points. But sometimes tragedy or hard things or trials, they come unexpectedly. And you have to be ready 
to handle those things. I don't want to be living in a world where I'm constantly expecting bad things to happen. Right. I remember speaking to a minister and that was their mindset that, oh, you know, this person says this something nice to me. So that means they're leaving the church, for example, like the, the mindset was so negative that it was like always expecting something bad. I'm not, I don't want to live like that, but we do have to realize that in this life, um, sometimes bad things happen unexpectedly. So first point, remember that God will give us the victory in the end if we remain faithful to the Lord Jesus. So we have to remain faithful. Psalm 30 verse four and five says, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yes, we may enter a time of weeping. I was weeping earlier this week. I was in shock. Um, sometimes I'm still weeping, still in shock. But I know that joy is going to come back. I know, for example, Lori is in heaven. Lori is better than all of us that are in this room right now. Her journey is over. Her sickness, her pain, her sorrow is all over hallelujah god has wiped the tears from her eyes and she is in a much better place amen than all of us right now so joy is going to come in the morning those of us who are in mourning hallelujah the joy will come in the morning but we have to stay with the lord god will bring you through this challenge this problem this sadness this trial that you face as long as you stay close to him oh gosh hallelujah Hallelujah. I want to go to 2 Corinthians 2.14, which is not in my notes. Hallelujah. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So the, he's going to let people know about Christ through us, and he's always going to lead us in triumph. We will have the victory sooner or later we will have the victory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. As long as we stay with him. I want to go to Galatians, talking about staying with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And it says, hallelujah. Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So we'll get the reward. We'll get the victory if we keep on sowing. Amen. And don't lose heart. We can't Amen. be discouraged. Right. It's like I said, I was talking to a, a colleague of mine um, because I did mention to some people on the job. You know, I have there's deadlines on my, my secular job for school teaching. You have to turn in paperwork. You have to do all kinds of stuff. And I mentioned to some of my colleagues so they would know if I'm dropping the ball on some things, right? My lesson plans were not on time this week. I had to let my supervisor know that this is why they're not on time. Um, so my, my dear friend came to me and was just checking in with me. And I said, you know, I know that everything will be okay. It's hard, but I know that everything will be okay. Amen. Because I know that if you keep on doing good, like it says here in Galatians, you are going to get the victory. You are going to reap. Hallelujah. Now, we have to remember that as followers of the Lord Jesus, we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Oh, feel the presence of the Spirit of God. When I start speaking in tongues like that, is that I feel the presence of the Spirit of God. And 1 Corinthians 6, 18 makes it very clear. It says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And it, this says it's very serious because, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? So this is not just for anybody. It's for the believer. This is for the Christian because it says here, for you were bought at a price. The only people who have been bought at a price are the people who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, who have accepted what he did for us on the cross. 
uh, that blood that he shed to give us eternal life. He took our place. You know, we, we deserve to, the punishment from God for our sins. And he took our place. So we wouldn't have to have that punishment. So it says here, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God. Oh, hallelujah. In your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. So we know the soul is who we are. First Thessalonians 5.23. We are three part being, right? Spirit, soul, and body. And the spirit connects us to the spirit realm. But when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, the spirit is now God's. The body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit and your soul is saved. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying this because when you face a big problem, when you face sadness, when you face tragedy that's unexpected, 1 John 4, 4 says, hallelujah, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. So the devil who governs this world system, and we know from, I preached it before, but Matthew 4, 8, when Jesus, when Jesus was being tempted, when he had been tempted, and then the devil was, when, when he was, had fasted 40 days, and then the devil was tempting him, the last temptation that he the devil, there was three temptations and the last, and I think probably the greatest temptation the devil gave him was to give him the world. Jesus came to save the world. So the devil said, I have authority over the world system. I can give you everybody. I, you, you can have everybody, right? But we know that the devil is going to, he's not any, he's nobody's friend. He's, ever, you know, he's not even his own friend. And he's going to, he comes here to kill, steal and destroy. So, of course, the Lord Jesus knew that the Lord Jesus knew the devil before he was the devil. He knew him when he was Lucifer, the angel, of, you know, beautiful angel in heaven. But Matthew 4, 8 says, again, the devil took him up, took Jesus up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. That's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons so many bad things happen in this world is that when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave their authority over the world to the devil. And so we see this here, right? And it says here, then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And then the devil left him and they, behold, the angels, angels came and ministered to him. So we have in the holy spirit he's greater than the one in the world so that that's that phrase he who is in the world he because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world he who is in the world he who dominates and has authority over the world system is the devil right until the lord jesus does the final defeat of the devil the one who's in charge of the world system is the devil and but the holy spirit in us is greater so the Holy Spirit is greater than the devil. He's greater than any problem we can face, than any tragedy that we can face, any sadness that we're dealing with, any mourning that we're dealing with. He's greater. So I say all of this, that remember, first point, remember that God will give us the victory in the end. Hallelujah. If we remain faithful to the Lord Jesus. Second thing, second point I felt the Lord give me is that we can encourage ourselves in the Lord by remembering that God will help us out of our current problem, just like he helped us out of past problems. You've got to think, right? Did God bless you in the past? Did he take you out of stuff in the past? In this case, did God help me through the death of other loved ones in the past? If he helped me deal with the death of those people, he's going to help me deal with this too. Amen. And, you know, that, that can be hard to remember, but it's important to remember. First Samuel 30, verse one. First Samuel 30, verse one. This is a very powerful story. It says, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire. 
and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David's men and his all their families were, were now living in Ziklag. The Amalekites come, invade, and they take captive all of the, the women and the children. Right? Because David and the men weren't there. So David and his men, verse 3, came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. Everything was burned down. And their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. So they had lost everything. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. These are grown men. These are warriors that are weeping until they have no more strength to weep. And David's two wives, we know that in the Old Testament, God allowed, and even today, God allows, um, even in the body of Christ, there's places in Africa where people are Christian, but they have more than one wife. Um, we also know that in the word, it says for leaders in the church, that you should be the husband of one wife, because it's, it's too much distraction. God made Adam and Eve. He didn't make Adam, Eve, and, and Sarah. He made, you know, a man to be with one woman, but um, some things are permitted in his will that are not his ideal will. But in any case, David's two wives, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite had been taken captive. So David's family was taken captive too. Now David was greatly distressed. So David is weeping. This is a time of weeping, right? We said weeping may endure for a night. Weeping will come sometimes. Hallelujah. For the people spoke of stoning him. So the people who were supporting him at this point were so upset. They were probably thinking, David, you we, did, we trusted you to lead us, to guide us, and look what we have. Nothing. So they wanted to kill him. So they spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters, right? Because the greatest thing you can have is your family. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. See, David didn't stay weeping. David had to think about, you know, God, you brought me through all of these battles. I've been fleeing from Saul. I've had to fight different, different uh, enemies. And you've given me the victory. So then in the rest of the chapter, David leads these men to go and get their, their, their families back. Right, because material things, yeah, they burn down Ziklag, but material things can be replaced. People can't. That's why I always tell my daughter Gabriella when she says, Oh, if there's a fire, if you could press the button, please. If there's a fire, no, not that button. Down there, stay in the call. If there's a fire, do what do I do with my toys? Right? And I tell her, just leave the toys. You know, get out of the fire. You're not gonna you're not gonna try and take your toys, right? So material things can be replaced. You can get more toys, you can get another house, but you can't get another Gabriella, you can't get another person, right? So that's very important. So they were able to recuperate their families. Another time, David, this was very clear that David thought about his past victories and said, you know what? If I could get through this, if God could help me through this, he can help me through this next challenge, All right? So if you're facing something today and you feel like you're overwhelmed, guess what? God helped you through in the past. If he helped you in the past, he's going to help you in the future. Amen. So like Gabriella, if he helped you through first grade, he's going to help you through second grade. She's being so good. She's actually sitting through the message. Usually we dispatch the children and, you know, I don't know if she'll sit through the whole message, but she's sitting here. And listening to the message, praise God. Um, but that's an example for a child. But for all of us, there's examples, right? And for me personally, the situation with Lori, I'm very grieved in my spirit. But at the same point, if God helped me through the death of this person and that person and this person and that person, my uncle Bob passed away. My grandmother's passed away. Um, Judy passed away. 
you know, many people have passed away and he's helped me through it. He's going to help me through this as well. As sudden as it was. So first Samuel 17 verse 33 and Saul said to David, this is when David was going to get ready to go and fight against Goliath. You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. Right. But David said to Saul, because sometimes nobody's going to believe in you, but you just like when it, we talked about Ziklag, the only person that believed in David at that point was David and God. Right. The people wanted to kill him. His own followers wanted to kill him. And right here, nobody's believing in David. But David believed David, you and Jesus are a majority. So Dave, David used his past testimony and said, but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. So sometimes you might be in a, in a situation where you're like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know what you're preparing me for, but you're preparing me for something. So your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. So that's really powerful, right? You project the future victory based on your past victory. If God helped you in the past, he's going to help you through this thing that you're facing in the present. Hallelujah. That's like, that was the error. That was the mistake that Elijah made, right? He had just defeated the prophets of Baal, hundreds of prophets on Mount Carmel. God had set his offering on fire. He had put an offering on an altar that he wet with water. The prophets of Baal offered their, their offering and they were screaming and, and shouting and whatever. Then nothing set on fire. He puts water on his offering and God sets it on fire. The whole, everybody says that, Okay, God, the, your God is, is God, basically. And then what happens? Jezebel threatens him and he runs. Why would you run away when one person threatens you if you just defeated hundreds of people and the whole nation believes in you? Because sometimes what happens to us is we forget. We forget if God helped me out of this situation, he can help me out. Of, he's going to help me out of this situation. Amen. There's nothing too hard for him to fix. Hallelujah. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So that is very important to remember. God will give us the victory in the end if we remain faithful to the Lord. We have to encourage ourselves by remembering that God will help us today, just like he did in the past. Right. So he'll give us the victory. He'll help us today like he did in the past. And the last thing seems very obvious, but sometimes the obvious things are the things that we don't do, right? And that is when we face a surprise trial, we need to pray. We need to seek the Lord Jesus, right? Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. So right there, Worry and despair. You know, sometimes people get so, so upset that they lose hope. Sometimes they even want to, you know, think about harming themselves. And they lose hope. But right here, that tells me be anxious for nothing means that that's a sin. If you're worried, if you're in despair, if you're hopeless, that is sin. Because... What can sin be defined as? Sin can be defined as disobedience to God. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything, what's the key? In everything by prayer and supplication. So we have to pray. We have to communicate with God. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So to avoid the sins of worry and despair, we have to avail ourselves of the privilege we have when we as believers pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that sometimes people pray and God is not listening. Luke chapter 18. It's not in my notes, but it's, it's a powerful scripture. You could pray and God could, could be not listening to you. Hallelujah. Verse 9, Luke 18, 9. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. So when this is an example. If you think you're better than other people, right? Not everybody talking about heaven is going there is the old saying, right? There's people who think that they're better than other people. You know, I've been saved 30 years. Well, you know what? With your nasty attitude, you may not be saved anymore. You might not be going to heaven, right? So also his, he spoke his this parable to some who trusted in themselves. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, not through us who strengthens us. My wife always talks about in Spanish, the yo-yo, right? I, I, meaning, you know, I'm the one who prayed. I'm the one who healed. I'm the one who dis, did this or that. And she's absolutely, absolutely right. We shouldn't be trusting in ourselves. We have to be trusting in the Lord. Amen. So also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in, them, in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, so a religious leader, and the other a tax collector. And we know that in the church today, we have religious leaders, and some of them are Pharisees. Some of them are hypocrites, right? They, they say one thing, and they do another. They talk about the love of Christ, and they're not showing it, right? The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. You can be praying with yourself. When you, some people, they pray, and they're talking to themselves, Right, because if your heart's not right, or if it's, you're not trying to have your heart be right, I'm not like we're going to be perfect, right? But if you're not trying, right, if you don't recognize that you're imperfect, for example, you know, I recognize that I'm imperfect. That's for sure. Um, but if you don't recognize that, and you think you're the best thing since sliced bread, you're going to be praying and you're going to be talking to yourself. It says, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. He thinks he's better. Doesn't know what's in that person's heart or why they're a tax collector. He just thinks he's better than him. I fast twice a week. Ooh, right? In abundant love, we have a fast usually Saturday and Sunday. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house, justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Hallelujah. So, you know, as a believer... We have a privilege. It is a privilege to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a privilege to have that communication with God. And we really, sometimes we don't, and we're going to, that's what the offering song, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. How many, you know, oh, what, what grief, hallelujah. What a privilege to carry, ever, take everything to God in prayer. Oh, what grief we often for, well, what peace we often for, what forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. So John 16, 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Amen. And sometimes when we ask, 
the Lord Jesus does in Ephesians 3.20. He gives us exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think. He gives us something even better. You know, I know, for example, Sister Lori was dealing with some medical issues and she didn't know what everything was going on. And I believe, you know, like we sang, there's a leak in this old, in this building and her soul had to move. Amen. God, God protected her from Amen. going through a bunch of stuff that she probably didn't want to go through. So, you know, sometimes the prayer has an answer that is a little different than what we asked for, but it's even better. Amen. Amen? And he'll, he'll make our joy be full. So when we have despair or, you know, worry, we have to pray. We have to pray. You're, if you're a sincere follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, take your burden to him in prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. And keep on praying, right? That goes back to Luke 18, verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice to, for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? So he wants us to keep praying. He wants us not to lose heart. He wants us to keep doing good, not grow weary in well-doing. Just like for other sins, God gives us a way out of sin and despair, out of the sin of despair and worry. But it, it is his way that will work. See, a lot of times people want to do things their own way, right? But it has to be his way. So... You know, for example, I could say, okay, Lord, just take this burden from me. And, you know, I need to get stuff done. Just take this burden from me. And the Lord might say, you know, I want you to rest. I want you to take a little extra time to get some things done. I want you to kind of eliminate some things from your agenda, which I've done this week. I've done. I said, for example, about the lesson plans, I said to my supervisor, you know, I'm sorry. This is not going to be done on time. It's not, you know, the leadership class for our church this Sunday is canceled. There's certain things that you just, you have to take time to process when you have a, a, a tragedy, when you have a trial that hits you suddenly, sometimes you just have to stop. Um, you know, had a family member that was in the hospital the other week. And I hadn't seen this person in a long time. I said, you know what? I have to, I, I can't go to work. I have to go and see this person because life is fragile. Sometimes you have to shut the, the agenda down. You have to shut what you're doing down and just, you know, deal with whatever hard thing is trial has come up. But anyway, we have to do things the way God wants us to do. So I want to share these two scriptures in tandem. First one is 1 Corinthians 10, 12. It says, therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. That's one reason why every day I really try and start off in prayer. This morning, be honest with you, I did not have this message ready. I did not have the music ready for the service. I, I really, I had in my mind some things, but I didn't have anything ready. And I'm sitting here on the couch about six in the morning, 6.30. I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? And then the Lord said, I felt from the Lord, go and pray. Right? What is the, the in the human way of thinking, what is the reaction? I'm going to skip prayer today. I'm doing all of this stuff for Jesus. So let me skip prayer and let me, let me. Do what I need to do to get things. No, let me pray. And then after I prayed, this message came out in 45 minutes. 
all the scriptures just flow like that. So, you know, you have to depend on the Lord Jesus. Take, you know, let him who thinks he stands. You think that you got it all together. You don't. The only way you have it together is if you're depending on the Lord Jesus. So therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Then verse 13 talks about the way of escape. No temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So guess what? We know that sin, that, that worry and despair are a sin. Depression is a sin. If God says be anxious for nothing, being in that place and staying there is a sin. Right? Because it's not obedience to God. So to get out of that, right, God gives you a way of escape. And part of that is prayer. Right. He will replete. He will replace the sadness with peace if you pray. Peace that passes all understanding. You know, I remember when, you know, for example, when my grandmother Carmen was dying. And. You know, God gave me peace. I was I was sad at times, but he gave me peace to keep going with everything I was doing, with my job, with the ministry, it was very hard, but he gave me the strength and the peace to do it. So he will give you that peace, but you have to do things. You have to take his way of escape. Sometimes people get stuck in a place because they don't take God's way of escape, right? If God says, pray, if you are anxious and you don't pray, right, you get stuck. And the enemy can trap you and the enemy can bind you up. Isaiah 55, 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. If God offer, offers you the way of escape and you don't take it, sometimes when you want to take it, it's too late. Right? You know, people, for example, God might be telling you, Stop smoking, stop smoking. And then when you want to get healthy, you already got cancer, right? You want a miracle now. You want a miracle that God will heal you. But it was already telling you in different ways, don't do that anymore. You know, so sometimes, you know, for my own self, exercise, you know, when you're so weak, that it's hard because of the, the you know, I had to, that dealt with post COVID so weak that you can hardly get off the floor. There's a point when the spirit is saying, you've been to physical therapy. Now it's time to exercise. Whether it's, you know, and I started off, praise the Lord. I started off with the crunches. I couldn't do a sit up. I couldn't do one. So I would do half, I do halfway, I do crunches. And eventually I could do a couple sit-ups and eventually now I can do 25 sit-ups. Amen. Right. But what happens to people? They want God to heal them. Okay. I'm, you know, I'm all atrophied and I'm, I'm on my deathbed or, you know, and God sometimes will raise people up out of his mercy and grace, but we have to seek him while he may be found. Because sometimes if you let things go, it gets to be too late. It's like Esau, it says in Hebrews. Esau, he gave up his birthright for a, a bowl of soup and then he wanted it back. And it was too late, even though he saw it with tears. You know, we have to be careful what we say. We, life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. My dad had shared with me before when he's talking about the, my marriage and, and it's, that's been an area that I need to work on myself. But um, sometimes you say things that can destroy a relationship. And it's very hard to unsay them, undo them. 
So seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. But you know what? You've got to forsake the wicked thoughts. You've got to return to the Lord. It's not our way. It's God's way. He wants to bless us, but it's God's way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your, nor are your ways my way, says the Lord. So sometimes what we have planned, God has such such a better plan. Amen. I was telling my wife the, last Saturday, I said, you know, I'm not a kind of person on my own I would ever go to the movies. And this is not to, to say like Paw Patrol is the best thing in the world, but we went to the Paw Patrol movie and I had we had a great time. And I said, you know what? I've had so much more fun in my life because I have you in my life, I said to her. And it's true, right? God's ways is not our ways, right? There's things out there he wants us to do and experience that we would never have thought of, right? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, Hallelujah. Yeah. But water the earth and make it bring forth bud, bring and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Hallelujah. We do things God's way. Like pray when we're in a, in a tragedy, pray when we're in a trial, and keep praying. Don't just pray a little bit and say, ah, this didn't work. I've talked to people that are like that. I prayed for five minutes. It didn't work. It doesn't work for me. No, you have to keep praying. And God will make it work. Can Hallelujah. I give a testimony? You can give a testimony. Let me finish. I'm almost done with the sermon. And then we'll take your testimony. Hallelujah. Because I believe what you said about you face problem when you pray. And God opens the door. Amen. Amen. You could definitely give your testimony. And I wanted you to give your testimony about the vision that you saw. Um, you know, God is real. I'm hoping to hold his hand the next time. God is real. Amen. <coughs> and and I believe that. I, I feel his presence every single day. You see me preaching and sometimes the tongues come out. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. It's not me just Amen. trying to make an act or make a show. I'm not, I'm not pretending these things. But I'm saying all of this to say, hallelujah, that, um, you know, to pray, to pray, to pray when you are in times of trial. Something throws you for a loop, stop and talk to Jesus about it. And do things his way. That's Amen. his way. Amen. Okay. Amen. Remember that prayer can also include musical worship. Yeah. It's, musical worship is not the only way to pray, but I do want to share that because sometimes people, when they get sad, they want to listen to some sad secular song. That's not going to help you, right? Like there's a song we were watching Charlotte's Web, and then there's the song where Charlotte is dying, okay? I told Gabriela, I can't listen to this song, right? I can't listen to this song makes me too sad first it was making me sad because it was making me think about when i'm gonna go and she's you know leave her in this world if the lord's coming is delayed and then now with with Lori passing away i definitely don't want to listen to this song unless we're watching the movie i can watch the movie but i'm saying you know to just sometimes we listen to the song i don't want to listen to the song so in any case um Sometimes it helps to take the words of someone else to the Lord as your own. Amen. And I just want to share the idea of singing and worshiping the Lord is definitely something that's biblical, even if you're in a trial, like we sang today. But we sang to honor, a lot of it was to honor Lori's memory and to be inspired by that memory and testimony of her life. Um, 
to, you know, to do good in our own lives, to be better Christians, be better people. Habakkuk 3.17 to 19. And with this, I'm going to end, end the, the preaching and go into our prayer of salvation. And then my mom has two testimonies to share because she does have a tremendous testimony about um, a vision that she saw, a vision or a, I don't know what you would call it. It was a vision. It wouldn't be a dream because it wasn't no, a dream. It, it was in a person. It was not your um, so Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19, though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit beyond the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls. You have to understand this in the context of the society that the Jewish people were in at this time. Mm. It's agricultural. So if you have no fig tree, you have no fruit, you have no olives, you have no fields yielding food, this total catastrophe. Talking about people going hungry. Mm -hmm. Probably the only person I know who really understands what that could be like is my dad, because after World War II in Germany, it was hunger. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about here. Verse 18 says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. And verse 19 says, why? Why can you still sing in the midst of such catastrophe? The Lord God is my strength. Amen. So you know that he's going to get you through whatever you're going through as long as you stay faithful to him. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, you know, to be able to have access to that privilege and prayer that I was talking about, you have to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. And then you have um, to be able to connect with the father through the Lord Jesus Christ, it says Romans 10, nine, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And of course we have to have the right heart because James says that in the book of James, it says that the, de the demons believe, but they tremble, right? So the demons know that God is real but they haven't confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, and they haven't repented of their sins. And Acts 17, 30 says we have to repent. God wants us to repent. So go away from what's bad, go towards what's good. And then, of course, one of the most important scriptures in the Bible is Matthew 24, 13, which he who endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. And that means, you know, this is not something you just say a prayer today and then you, you just let you know, time pass and um, something like that. I'm not, you just let it, let it go. You have to follow the Lord consistently to the end of your life. Praise the Lord. Um, so I'm going to say a prayer of salvation based on that, those, those scriptures. Amen. And incorporate, because this is a virtual service, we'll incorporate um, the message as well into the prayer. Um, and then after that, um, I would like for my mom to give her testimony. I'm also very blessed. My wife is, is here. She looks so pretty, so beautiful, and she's all dressed up and um, ready to go. Um, so I would like for her to pray over the offering. Um, she's got a real anointing for um, financial breakthrough in the church, and I always want her to know that I'm grateful for that. I remember when she first came to the church, and she saw what we were getting for the offering. She said, this can't be. She started praying and the offering multiplied by, by three times. Amen. So definitely got a special anointing there. So we'll let her pray for the offering. Um, but I just want to say this prayer of salvation. Um, if you could repeat with me from the heart, if it is that your your desire to do so, Father God, Father God, thank you, thank you for sending Jesus Christ for sending Jesus Christ to die for me, to die for me, and thank you, and thank you for raising him, for raising him from the dead, from the dead, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess you, I confess you as my Lord, as my Lord. 
and Savior. And Savior. Father, Father, change me. Change me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Have mercy. Have mercy on me. On me. Just like you did. Just like you did. On that tax collector. On that tax collector. I am far from perfect. I am far from perfect. Bless me to be better and better. Bless me to be better and better. Until I get to heaven. Until I get to heaven. Bless me. Bless me. To stay with the Lord Jesus. To stay with the Lord Jesus. And when I go through trials. And when I go through trials. Bless me to pray. Bless me to pray. Bless me to remember. Bless me to remember. That you have my victory. That you have my victory. And bless me to remember. And bless me to remember. That if you got me through past trials. That when you got me through past trials. You'll get me through the present trials. You get me to bless me through the present trials. In Jesus Christ's name. I pray. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 So if anybody has a testimony, anybody needs a Bible for personal use, anybody needs prayer, um, the phone number that's listed on our Facebook, the phone number that's listed on our website, AbundantLoveChurch.us, you can contact that via WhatsApp. It's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Um, and um, we, we will lift up your request and prayer and try and get those Bibles to you for personal use. Praise the Lord. So I'm excited to hear these testimonies that my mom has. Praise the Lord for Reverend Mary. Amen. Thank you, Anthony. It's awesome to have a mom who is also your assistant pastor and a minister. Amen. It's awesome. It's like it's awesome to have a wife who has a calling to preach. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, just like Anthony said, when you have a problem, pray, pray, pray. Me and my mother were very close. And at the end of her life, she was dealing with Alzheimer's. And how did I communicate with her? By using prayers. I went to visit her and I started worshiping the Lord. And my mother responded. When we, when we finished praising, I said, Mom, who am I? And she would tell me my real long true name. And when I asked her, who are you? She would recite her name that was very difficult to remember. Amen. When my mom passed, she passed on a Sunday, and I remember like today, we had a service. We went to see her, and I said to her, we come back. When 10 minutes later, she was gone. But I'm a person of prayers. I don't see, if I don't pray in the morning, I don't feel okay. Praise you. No matter what I'm going through. And you know what Jesus did to me? That night my mother came through the door of my bedroom and said, I'm okay. And my heart felt that I was happy. That I didn't have to be upset anymore because she was in heaven. Jesus gave me that privilege. And I feel in my spirits because the answer to my prayers. Because I'm a person that I pray and I pray and I pray. And if I don't pray, I don't feel okay. And I pray every day. I, the earliest I get up, I'm in prayer, in prayer. I pray usually for like two hours. And I pray the same things over and over and over. Because I know God is listening. And I know that he says, claim my name and I hear you. People say, I don't have to pray because God knows what I need. No, he wants to hear from your mouth. Amen. If you have a problem, pray it, say it. And that's how I work. Well, I've been praying for things for a long time. And guess what happened? I'm in my bed. I'm getting out of my bed. And I see right next to me, I see that Jesus showing his, his, uh, so manto, so uh, it's like his robe. I saw his robe. 
He's saying to me, I'm here, I'm listening. Keep on praying because prayer is the answer to life. And that's how I live by. Even the day I die, I will pray and pray. I even said to God, forgive me for the things I haven't even done because I don't want to stay in this world. I want to go with you, Lord. So have mercy on me. Because things can happen to people. People could change. Amen. Amen. And I want to share some of my favorite passages of the Bible. Matthew 21, 22. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you Amen. shall receive. When I pray, I always thank. For every little prayer, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I must thank God about 10 times Amen. every day. Because I believe that he's listening and he wants to be aware that I know that I have to thank him because he's the creator. And I believe that. That's one of my, my favorite passages of the whole Bible. I even have a, 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 hanging, a hanging in my hallway that reminds me every day, whatever you ask, believe and you shall receive. I believe that God is listening. That's why he showed me his rope. Because he's saying, here I am. Amen. And the next thing I wanted to do, I want to hold his hand, Lord. I want to feel your hand in my hand. And that's one of my, I will not let go until you bless me. Hallelujah. So that's, that's how I live by. I'm unperfect. I sin. I worry. Like you say, worry is a sin. But when I get to that book, that wonderful book, and I get in the presence of God. I pray and I thank Him. Don't forget to thank God for everything that He does for you. Amen. Even to walk you up. Pray, thank, thanks, thanks. So sometimes I feel God is tired of listening to me. No, He showed me His rope. He's saying, I'm here, Mary. Don't stop praying. And that's all I wanted to communicate. I praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. What, a, praise the Lord. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's awesome. Lord, that's awesome. Lord, that's awesome. Lord, that's awesome. What an awesome testimony. Amen. And um, we do, we actually are uh, fasting this morning and talking about prayer. Um, my mother brought up a psalm about Israel. And part of our fast is for Israel. Amen. Um, so I wanted to lift up some petitions before I call my wife up to pray for the offering. Um, Psalm 122. What? 122.6 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. May they prosper who love you. Amen. Peace Amen. be within your walls, prosperity within your palaces. For the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Amen. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Amen. You know, as a Christian, I firmly believe this Bible that we have, the Old Testament is all written by Jews. The New Testament is all written by Jews, except for the book of Luke and the book of Acts, which were written by a Greek. Um, Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. So my boss is a Jewish carpenter. Amen. And I have been praying for Israel for years. Um, so this church supports Israel. A very, very sad piece of news. And it's something to really keep in mind about the whole Palestinian situation is that, you know, Egypt was asked to open its borders to these refugees. They don't want them. So the other countries, the, the Muslim countries, people want to blame everything on Israel, but the other countries don't want the Palestinians either. So their own quote unquote Muslim brothers don't want them. And you see what, you know, whatever the history may be, there's no reason. It's like with Russia and Ukraine. There's no reason to attack somebody who isn't provoking you. Mm 
Man. You'd be killing civilians and stuff like that. It's terrorism. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we praise you and we thank you right now. Father God, we pray right now. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, yes, Father God. Lord. We pray, hallelujah, yes, Lord. hallelujah, hallelujah, for victory for Israel, hallelujah. Lord God. We pray you would hallelujah. give them the victory until the hallelujah. rapture, Father God. We know in the rapture, the Antichrist will rule over the whole world, Father God. But until that point, Father God, we pray for victory for Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We pray, Father God, that all their enemies Amen. will be defeated in Jesus Christ's name. I praise you, Father God, that that's a nation that's strong, Father God, in their mindset, Lord God, that was engraved in them by the Holocaust in part, Father God, that they cannot let people step on them, Father God. And that other countries that they say, don't do this and don't do that. But then when somebody's trying to step on them, they don't support them, Father God. So they have to be strong, Father God. I pray for the Palestinian refugees, Father God, because you want us to pray for everybody, Father God. I pray that you will supply all their need according to your, your riches and glory. I pray, Lord God, that you would save their souls, yes, Father God. Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Just like I pray for spiritual awakening in Israel. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That there will be many more Jews, Lord God, more and more Jews that believe that Jesus is the Messiah, Lord God, that Jesus is God the Son. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But at the same time, Father God, I pray for Israel, Father God, for victory for that country, Lord God. Yes, Lord. I pray that you would anoint them, Lord God, so that what they do, the world could not condemn, Father God. I praise you that you gave them wisdom to put those pamphlets out so that the people, they were saying to the people, they didn't just go in and, and, and destroy, Father God. They let the people know, get out of here, Father God, because if not, we, we are coming. We are coming to take over, so get out. Oh, I praise you and I thank you for that wisdom, Father God. But Lord God, I pray, Lord God, you know that a small group of people, they can defeat a bigger nation, Father Hallelujah. God. So Hallelujah. the Palestinians, it's not over yet, Father God. Hallelujah. We pray for victory for Israel, Lord God. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for safety and security. Yes. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, yes, Father God. Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And likewise, Father God, we don't let you go about Ukraine, Father God. Bless them too with the victory. Yes, we continue Jesus. to cry out to you for a strong, democratic, hallelujah, hallelujah, free Ukraine. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Any corruption in the government, Lord God, keep cleaning it out, Father God. Yes, oh, hallelujah. So that nation will stand until the rapture, Father God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We cry out to you for Taiwan, Father Amen. God. Oh, God. Continue being a wall of yes, fire around Lord. Taiwan, Father God. We oh, praise God. you and we thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. We would cry out to you for the United States, Father God. Yes, Jesus. Lord God, all of these conflicts are causing our weapons stockpile to be decreased, Father God. Yes, we pray Jesus. for wisdom for the government, Lord God. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus. That we would continue to produce all of the weapons, hallelujah, that are needed, Lord God, to protect us inside our nation and, yes, and these help Jesus. our friends outside yes, our nation, Lord God. Oh, God, to keep fighting, Lord God. Hallelujah. Because just like David fought righteous wars, Lord God, there are times when there are righteous wars, Lord God. Amen. When somebody attacks you and you did not do anything to provoke that, Lord God, no direct provocation, Father God, that is a righteous war, Father God. Amen. And that's why I pray for Ukraine to have the victory. And that's why I pray for Israel to have the victory. Amen. <laughs> And that's why I could pray. I will pray for Taiwan to be protected, Perfect. Father God. Oh, oh hallelujah. Angel. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I pray for the United States 
keep us strong and yes, democratic. Jesus, Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. And free until the rapture, Father God. Oh, God. Because, Father God, you know we deserve your destruction, Lord God. Yes, Between Lord. the abortions, Father yes, God, Lord. and the perversion, Lord God. Hallelujah. The human trafficking, Father God. The drug addiction, the alcoholism, Lord God. We deserve to be destroyed, Father God. But I ask you for extra mercy yes, upon Jesus. this nation. Yes, Continue Jesus. your extra mercy upon this nation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I pray, Father God, it will last until the rapture, Lord God. I pray for spiritual awakening in this nation. I pray for spiritual awakening around the world, Father God. The maximum number of souls will be saved now and always. Because really, Lord God, that's why we transmit these services. Yes, that's why Lord. I do this service, Father God. Because there's thousands of people behind this camera, Father God. And even if one person gets saved, it was worth the effort. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So we praise you, Father. We thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name. And Father God. Oh, God. I have to pray that you would cover us, cover us all, Lord God, involved in these yes, intercessions Lord. with the precious blood of Jesus Christ in spirit, soul, and body, now and always, Father God, so we would avoid all unnecessary attacks of the devil, Father God. You know that the devil wants to attack us, Lord yes, God. Jesus. You know that he wants to destroy. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Lord Jesus, according to John chapter 10, 10, has come to give us life and life more abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father God, we pray for your protection over us, Lord God, over us, our descendants, and all of our loved ones, Father God, because if he can't get to us, he'll try and get to our loved ones, Father God. Protect us, Father. Oh, God. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father God, we continue to cry out to you for all the people on our list of fasting and prayer, Lord God. We, of course, pray for, for consolation, Lord God, and comfort for all of us mourning the loss of the passing because it's not a, it's a loss to us but it's a gain for heaven Amen. the passing of Lori Clawson Father God oh hallelujah we continue to cry out to you for healing and continue recovery for Carolina Maria Capelli's niece Joel which is Virginia's son my cousin Kendra my wife Josh Ortiz Jocelyn hallelujah oh my brother-in-law Gerd my nephew Parker Susan Crum, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My cousin Angel, oh, hallelujah. For me, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. And also for people going through really hard situations, we ask for your for well-being for them, Lord God, for deliverance, Lord God, for Alan and for Josiah and Betsa and Katie and this Beth, Father God. Oh, I believe that you make you are the God that makes the blind see and the deaf Amen. hear, Father God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And you can make a way out of no way for them, Father God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We continue to cry out to you for Carmine and my Aunt Marisol yes, for the victory Lord. for them, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 For Marina and Maritza and her family, for my Uncle Antonio, my cousin Claudia, Lord God, for Janice and her family, for Valerie Williams and her family, for Martha and her family, Sadi and her family. Oh, God. For Sister Bonnie and Brother Washington, my cousin Elena, my brother-in-law Junior. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. And for all the people that we know that are in, in alcoholism and drug addiction, bound up in perversion of different types, Father God, we just pray for freedom, Lord God. 
for deliverance, Lord God. We're crying out to you with prayer and fasting, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. And we pray, Father God. I finished praying for the marriages and the families in abundant love and the body of Christ, Lord God. Bless them to be refuges. Hallelujah. For our, for bless us to be have a refuge in our families, a refuge in our marriages, Lord God. Oh, Please bless them, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, now and always, Father God. Unite us evermore in Christ and in love. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you and we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. And so now, um, as we prepare to close, one way to worship the Lord, of course, is by giving donations. Um, and my wife has that anointing for uh, finances. So I would like to ask her, she's dressed so pretty, um, all dressed up. She could come and pray for the offering. Well, Father God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the service, Father God. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you, Lord that you woke us up this morning, Father God, and that you hear our prayers, Father God, because our answer in every moment should be to seek you, Father God, Amen. because those who draw near to you, Father God, you are faithful to draw near to Amen. us, Father God, and your word says we have to find that answer in this book of life, Father God, your word, Father God, yes. your word is lamb to our feet, Father God, and in your presence there's fullness of joy, Father, and we want to honor you, Father God, in this time, Lord, like Pastor Anthony said, Lord, our way to honor you is with offerings, Father God. And we just ask you, Father God, to touch hearts, Father God. Touch hearts in this hour, Father God, that anyone watching this transmission, anyone here, anyone who's in the future going to watch this transmission, Father God, that you touch their hearts, Father God, because you want cheerful givers, Father God. And you want people who give, Father God, with a cheerful heart, Father God. We want to give you the offering, Father God, the tithe, with this, which is biblical, Father God. And we want to honor you, Father. So we just ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come in your holy holy presence, Father God, as the Lord of hosts, Father God, that if you find favor in me, Father God, that you use me as a mouthpiece, Father God, for this prayer, Father God, because I believe in your word and that word was preached today, Father, according to Isaiah 55, 10 and 11, that whenever we declare the word it won't come back to us void but it will complete the purpose in which we send it according to your mm -hmm. will father god not according to my will lord according to your will father god and we're asking father god for that rain to come father god that rain that harvest to be produced father god in this ministry father god not only father god that we want a, a, a church temple a physical building father god but we want the increase in the communities father god we want disciples of christ father god and for that lord we need cheerful givers in this ministry lord and if you find favor lord you use this time father god of prayer father god so that the offering will be multiplied according to your will and purpose yes. father god that everyone that be here and heard this word receive your son the lord jesus christ as their lord and savior and be used father god to the sowing of this ministry father god because it could be a domino effect father that if one gives another one gives and then you multiply and you make yes. the increase because you are lord the owner of gold the owner of silver the owner my god is the owner of all the cattle lord and i know that you will give us abundantly more than what we have asked today father and that you will multiply this ministry father god this offering and a tenfold way father god that we will be able to bless those who need a blessing for us and we will have that church building father god and when those people need a place to stay father we will be used in that purpose amen. Father. in jesus christ's name i pray amen amen and hallelujah thank you lord thank you, lord. Thank you father because your favor is better than anyone and like we say all the time you could be internationally and you can give an offering because we already have started to receive international um offering in this church and bless the name of the Lord for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
Praise the Lord. So, yes, the, all of the ways to give offerings are posted on our Facebook. And International can go through MoneyGram um, or Western Union. There's instructions on the Facebook for that. Reverend Mary, if you want to come and join me, we're going to sing our offering song, Amen. which is just perfect in line with, I felt to sing this based on the message that God gave me. Amen. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Which is posted on our website, AbundantLoveChurch.us. Hallelujah. And very appropriate when you're going through a trial, like the loss of Sister Lori. Amen. Amen. This song's very appropriate. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? You always be in communication Jesus. with you, Father yes, God. Yes, we praise you and we thank you for this time in your presence yes, and in your word, Father. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So from Abundant Love Christian Church, this is Pastor Anthony Menzel. Hallelujah. I love you in Jesus Christ's name. Have a tremendously blessed day.